In this video, we're going to continue our discussion about air conditioning controls in the advanced refrigeration section by talking about pressure switches. Now, we've mentioned pressure switches in a few other areas already in the core air conditioning, but let's talk about the types of pressure switches that are available and what their purposes are. First of all, we have a high pressure switch. It's used to protect the compressor. When the condensing temperature gets too high, it causes high pressures and it opens the, the Y to the compressor contactor. It reads high side pressure, it's located in the condensing unit, and it can be wired line duty or control voltage. Most often they are wired control voltage on the compressor contactor. The high pressure switch will open in a pressure rise and close on a pressure drop. Sometimes they're adjustable. Normally they're set to open at 350 PSI with a 75 PSI differential. There are also non-adjustable types. These are preset to pressures and a reset button must be pushed. Most often you're going to find in air conditioning high pressure switches have reset buttons. We want to manually reset on a high pressure shutoff. This is an example of a high and a low pressure next to each other. Okay, one will be wired piped to the low side, the other will be piped to the high side. They're normally wired in series with each other because both switches have to be closed for the compressor to run. This is another type of a high pressure control. This is an adjustable. These are non-adjustable. This is a combination high and low pressure control. You don't see that this often in air conditioning. You see these more in refrigeration. High pressure controls also can be fixed. And again, they will sometimes, actually most often, they will have a reset button on them. They're wired in on air conditioning. You'll find them wired in on the control side. They're in the condensing unit but they're wired as the Y winding comes into the unit. They're wired in series with the contactor coil. So if either of the high pressure controls open, the contact coil will get de-energized, opening the C1 and C2. A low pressure switch is also a safety switch. It opens on a pressure drop. It closes on a pressure rise. Again, the purpose is to de-energize the condensing unit if the refrigerant pressure gets too low. The indoor blower motor will remain running. The pressure switches only de-energize the outside unit. The low pressure switch opens at about 55 PSI gauge, PSIG, for R22. It's located in the condensing unit. It's wired either line duty or control voltage. Most often of the time, they're now control voltage. A low pressure switch will open due to restricted airflow on the inside components, okay? If the registers, grills, or it has a dirty evaporator, sometimes for a loose belt if it's a belt-driven motor. In other words, if there's not enough airflow, the evaporator pressure is gonna drop possibly start causing ice on the evaporator and you're going to see the pressures drop. Dirty evaporator as well. There's no heat exchange. The air is not moving freely across the evaporator. You'll see a low pressure switch open also on low refrigerant charge. Leaks in the system. Sometimes it will open on a cold day. Types of low pressure switches basically the same as the high pressure switches, okay? You have adjustables, you have combinations. Okay, this is a combination high and low. This is an adjustable low pressure control. And you have the fixed low pressure controls, again. Now the fixed low pressure controls usually do not have a manual reset. Low ambient controls are another type of pressure control. Okay, what it does, it cycles the condenser fan on and off. It runs the system at design pressures when the outside ambient temperatures are low. It's found in some residential units and it's usually found in commercial systems. Okay, the reason we wanna cycle the condenser fan on and off, it allows us to maintain a condensing 
pressure. We need to maintain the pressures in the system at or near design pressures. The low ambient controls are wired on the line side only, and it's best to wire after C on the condenser fan. You want it to wire it on the common side. It closes on pressure rise, usually around 250 PSIG for R22. It opens on pressure drop, 200 PSIG. So we have a 50 PSIG differential. Okay, so what happens here, okay, is what we do, we, as the pressure rises to 250 PSIG, we know that the temperature of the condensing side is rising. Okay, we turn on the condenser fan. If it's a very cold day outside, the pressures are going to very quickly drop down to 200 PSIG and below. So we turn off the condenser fan. So we know our high side pressure is going to maintain between 200 and 250 PSIG. So this is important because what it does, it actually allows us to maintain the inside pressure so we do not on the low side begin to freeze the coil due to low pressures. There are three different types of low ambient controls. You have pressure sensing. We also can sense the condenser discharge our air temperature and we can sense the liquid line temperatures. The function the low ambient control provides is it provides a high condensing temperature which in turn provides good refrigeration flow and it keeps the low side temperature above freezing. For air conditioning, I do not want the evaporator coil to get too cold and freeze. Now, we threw this extra switch into the combination of pressure controls. This is not really a pressure control, but it is an operating control. Some systems, especially commercial systems, include what's called a sail switch. It's going to be a mechanical switch that proves airflow. It's normally located in the ductwork on the supply side. And it actually has a, has a, a sort of a sail on it that blows when airflow hits it. The switch is open when no airflow is present, and it will close when the fan comes on. It prevents freezing of the evaporator coil if no indoor airflow is established. And it's usually wired into the Y circuit. So if there's no airflow, the sail switch does not allow the thermostat to condense or Y circuit to close. This is an example of the sail switch. The switch itself is usually mounted on the outside of the ductwork and the sail is mounted on the inside of the ductwork. This might be a light piece of plastic or even sheet metal.